All right, I'm going to take you through how to do a complete calculation using our size brace software. So the first thing that's important you have to do is you have to find where is our software located. And we keep it on the cloud. It's right here under www.asc-es.com. And once you come in here, the first time you, you have to be registered to use it. So we've up the up right here, it says customer login. You have to log in. If you have never logged in before, you have to register. They're going to ask you a few things, information about you, including your email address. You'll get something in your inbox, and then you will have to activate it. And if you have a trouble with activation, please feel free to give me a call, send me an email, and we'll make sure we get you taken care of. I am registered, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in. Once you have logged in, you should see your name appear up here. And once you're up there, we have hidden here under design tools, size brace fire protection tool. That's where we hide the magic. So let's click that. And this is the a typical one. There are some projects I have going on. So let's go ahead and create a new project. And I'm going to call this training two. And we have a cover page and I'm going to Fill in some information here, 123 Main Street. And you can fill in as much or as little information here as you want. And you can also fill all this in. I'm going to put um, ABC, ABC Architects in here. And you again, you can fill as much. Let's see if I can put a phone number in here. 123-456-9876. Uh, and I'm going to say save and so you can see where this will fill in. Once you have a product, a project, we're going to add seismic design. Within doing a seismic design, the software lets you subdivide within a project different portions. As example, building one, building two, building three, or floor one, floor two. I'm going to say this is building one. And at this moment, we have code requirements available. You can be compliant with the 2016 edition of 13 or the 2019, and we will be adding future additions to this as different standards come out. I'm going to I'm going to use the uh, I'll use a 19 edition today. And units, we let you do stuff in both metric and imperial. I'm a more comfortable in imperial, so that's what I'm going to choose. I'm going to say next. And we've done the kind of the house cleaning or housekeeping. We've made a a project. We've made a building. We've told them a little bit about it. Now the now we're going to actually get into the fun of the software and calculate a particular sway brace. And just like within hydraulic calcs, you maybe have most water area one, most water area two, and you have calculations to support those those calculations, those those specific remote areas. We're going to have different braces. You might have a that little two headed arrow symbol you draw on the plan, and you might put a, a an A on there as an example, brace A. And if you don't know where it goes, you can just say C plans. Quantity, we have a very powerful tool built in our software that does a bill of materials. And for starters, you can put a zero here, you can put a one, but if you know the quantity you have of these braces, go ahead and put the quantity you have. And in within the bill of materials, I can show you later in the reports, it will add all the like quantities together and help you with your stock listing. So for brace A, the next thing is pretty important. We have to determine what is the seismic coefficient C sub P. Remember, that's gonna be the thing you multiply the weight of your pipe in your zone of influence with. So the, the more we can reduce the C sub P, the better off we're gonna be. We give you three ways, I call it A, B, or C. I'm gonna to jump to B first. That is the prescriptive way. If you're in a jurisdiction that says you shall use a C sub P of 0.5 or 0.75, you can just flat out enter. Your seismic coefficient is C sub P. And that's some jurisdictions have codified or that's what you do. The other more, I'll say probably the most common way people determine their C sub P is they have a S sub S value that they've determined from plans or someone has told them. And you go ahead and enter your S sub S, 1.5 is an example. And then we'll go ahead and calculate the C sub P. And we're going to go look at the NFPA table. And I have reference here to the 2000 and 
2013, to, excuse me, the 2016 edition of the standard, but the 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 verbiage is about the same. In 2019, they subdivided chapter nine and all the nines became 17s or 18, depending if it was hangers or bracing. This is the 2016 edition, so it's 9.3. But this is the table that almost everyone uses where you can see a S of S of 1.5 get to a C sub P of 0.7. And the majority of people I teach, that's what they do. And they stop right there and they use 70% of the water for weight of pipe. That, that table is a simplified way that NFPA provides you to get your seismic coefficient. This, this is an evolutionary, and I want to say it's even a stepping stone as we evolve from the 40 and 80 prescriptive spacing to performance-based design. But NFPA never wants to stop new technology and new evolve. So things have always, the 93594 method has always been there. This section of the code is generally not acknowledged by most users. But essentially, that says you can use the ASCE7 method, which is this formula. This is a rather daunting formula, and most people don't want to dig into it, but it is this formula with worst case scenario plugged into all the variables or appropriate case, depending upon what variable we're talking about, but it is the worst case or appropriate values that is used to make this table right here. So if we go back to it, our, our program, you can see that if I put in the same S of S of 1.5, and then I put the same worst case in it, assume scenarios in there, which is stiff soil as a soil type and again that's an ASCE 7 classification and then where you are in the structure which as an example say if a 100 foot high building and I'm at the top of it because let's think when you have an earthquake the bedrock shakes the soil type will either dampen or amplify or be neutral to the effects of the earthquake on the footings of the building and then when the footings shake back and forth, the top of the building is going to sway back and forth. So a sway brace at the very top of the building is going to be the worst case scenario. And as you can see, S sub S of 1.5, stiff soil D, 100 foot high, and I'm at the same C sub P of 0.7. But if I know something better about my project, maybe I know that it's hard rock. And maybe I'm working and you see the C sub P drops down to a 0.56. Or if I'm doing it halfway up the building, my C sub P can drop down to a 0.374. So for the same exact site, I now have about half of the seismic coefficient that I had before just using the simple table. So again, going, going from using 93593 in this table or using 93594 and ASC's software helping you simplify this formula, you can greatly reduce your C sub P. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue with that C sub P and we just push next. So we, we know our seismic coefficient. The next thing we have to do is we have establish our zone of influence, which is the area of pipe that we're gonna, we're going to practice with. I'm gonna use this NFPA example and I'm going to look at this sway brace specifically as the one I'm going to calculate. And this zone of influence is all the pipe in this dashed line right here. And I have a portion of main, and I have these longitude, these lines right here. So we're going to look at the force being evaluated in a north-south direction. So the, it'll be a lateral brace because this main is going to want to move side to side. But we're also going to add the longitudinal force or the up-down direction of these lines Cumulative within the zone of influence methodology. We're going to add that to this sway brace and collect it all together. So let's go ahead and describe this pipe in the zone of influence. I'm going to just do a little imaginary here, lateral brace. And I'm going to say, oh, four inch pipe and schedule 10, and it's 40 feet long. And as soon as I pick that right out of the thing, I want you to notice that we're showing you that the allowable stress on that main, that piece of pipe is 769 pounds. And that's, we're pulling right out of the NFPA table that if I had a piece of four inch pipe with 40 foot spacing, 
you could go 769 pounds. A really exciting feature to our software, I like to point out to people, we've partnered with the different flow pipe manufacturers. So say you had Megaflow, 603 pounds, Eddyflow, 726 pounds. And we've partnered with all the, the different manufacturers here on this list. And if we hadn't done this, you'd be forced to by hand kind of default to the schedule five tables, which are in NFPA 13. So what I'm gonna say is we have schedule 10. And now let's also, uh, this main, I'm gonna say it's all the same size, but you could subdivide and have 20 feet of four inch and 20 feet of three inch or some other size. Let's now go ahead and add our branch lines. And with our software, we have you add each line individually because I'm gonna say, as an example, say I have a two inch line, also thin wall pipe. Maybe I have 80 feet of it. Maybe I have some additional arm overs in there, some schedule 40 pipe. Maybe I have 40 feet of that. And we also have a riser nipple. And I'm gonna go ahead and show my riser nipple. It's schedule 10. And I'm gonna pull my cursor here. And so I just click up you notice we start doing a, a calculation on the rising up stress. And I keep rolling my mouse up and wow, if I had an eight foot riser nipple, which is you know extremely, extremely tall and probably not realistic, um, we do overstress it. Now, in my example, I said only 80 feet of branch line, but if I had 200 feet of branch line, all of a sudden a three foot riser nipple may overstress it. And all of that comes from the idea that when I'm putting a sway brace on this main, a lateral sway brace, and it's to keep this main from moving side to side, and so force in that direction, that brace is also expected to keep this line from sliding back and forth. And to do that, the only connection between this line sliding back and forth is this riser nipple. So that riser nipple could easily be broken and, and fail. Well, when there is a major earthquake, after the earthquake, assuming the building hasn't fallen down or anything else, the next biggest hazard is a fire. So it's really important that the fire sprinkler system be intact and whole after the earthquake to put out a fire. This phenomenon of stressing a rising nipple, it's codified right here in NFPA 13, and this is the 16th edition, and again, it's uh, that changes to an 18, and it's in the 19th edition. And there are some parameters. You know, if you have a C sub P of 1.0 or greater, you have to you you have to calculate them if your rising nipples are longer than two feet and three feet and four feet for it. At at, at ASC, we've gone ahead and we just calculate them all all the time. Um, we think it's important to make sure that the rising nipple doesn't break. If it's as easy as spinning this wheel, why wouldn't you want to do that? So what? Let's go ahead and lower this. If for some reason you don't want to calculate it, you just you just delete the rising up all together and put your 81 feet right here. But I like calculating it, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my sprinkler system is going to be intact after an earthquake. And I have a two foot long rising up pole. And as you know, every we have one rising up supplies one branch line. So in my exercise, we have one, two, three branch lines. So I'm going to go back to our software and I'm going to say that that branch line is typical for three. So now I've taken care of all three of those branch lines and I've evaluated each individual rising up with each portion of line. I, if I had some other unusual line in there, maybe I have an inch and quarter line, uh, schedule 10, 34 feet, and it has a rising up pole, so I, and it's also inch and quarter. Schedule 10, let's get schedule 10 here. I have a two foot long riser nipple, great. And I, you can see so on and so forth, I could add more branch lines. So now I have my main, oh, look at this. I have overloaded the stress of my main. A schedule 10 main can only hold 769 pounds in my zone of influence calculation. So here's my weight, the total weight of pipe. Here's the NFPA required multiplier of 1.15. So I have 2,138 pounds of pipe. And even though I used our super fantastic formula to reduce my C sub P from a 0.7 to a 0.37, um, if this was a 0.7, you'd see that I have like 1,400 pounds here, right? So now I'm only at 800 pounds, but that's still too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna 
I'm going to do something to solve my problem. I'm going to say, let's put my mains a little bit closer together. Let's put them 35 feet apart. Now the allowable load is 918 pounds and everything works. So we've determined our seismic coefficient C sub P for this sway brace. I've described my zone of influence. So now I have a seismic force of 775 pounds, and that's what I'm going to have to use to figure a sway brace big enough to hold back that force, or strong enough, I should say. Next. So the next thing, let's define our structure and our sway brace. We have all these different forms of structure, so you can use it for just about anything. For this example today, I'm going to pick I-beam or steel. I'm going to say that it's it's so the project is similar to the project I'm looking at in my picture here. So I'm going to have a lateral brace and I'm going to go to the next adjacent joist. So in that exercise, I'm going to go I beam or steel. I'm going to go to a vertical flange. I'm going to say it is at least point a quarter of an inch thick. We have solutions for you from between an eighth of an inch and uh, three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to say my load is perpendicular because I'm going to the next adjacent joist. My sway brace, um, I could say it is 45 to 59. I'm actually going to say 45 to 90. Anything in that range, that lets the fitter have the flexibility to install it. I'm going to choose a slenderness ratio for my brace pipe, 100, 200, 300, which is a function of the load and length of the pipe. I'm going to pick 200. Allow me to stretch that pipe out to seven feet if it's one inch because i know in my example those joists are uh, eight feet apart i'm gonna have to use inch and quarter pipe that lets me go to nine feet next thing we we make five different swivels at at asc some of these are um products that came from the afcon and anvil merger and are kind of legacy products the newest Proudest one I'm up today is our AS700. This is a domestically made swivel. If we do a job in concrete, it has fabulous prying factors. It has a nice big base plate here, an easy to access hole. It comes in three sizes, half inch, five eighths, and three quarter. You can attach any pipe you want here. And if you're a fitter out there, think about it. That base plate, if you have a gloved, a gloved hand and you're trying to put a bolt or a nut on, this gives you very, very easy access. So that's the product I'm going to choose. Next thing, we're going to look at our brace pipe. This is that inch and a quarter. I mentioned that the nine feet long load looks good. Now I'm going to choose, do I want to use UL loads for our products or FM? I'm doing an NFPA based design. So I'm going to say UL listed loads. After that, we list, we list products we make in our line. You notice the here's a product we make, the 085. It's grayed out because it doesn't have an adequate load capacity. I'm going to go ahead and use our AF720. That's our, I want to say, our premier steel joist adapter. And we have a nice little feature here. If you don't see, you click on this, and we give you a little cheat sheet to remember. Oh yeah, that's what a that's what an AF720 is, because some of you new users may not have all of our parts memorized right away. I'm going to go ahead and pick the AF720 lateral sway brace. I'm going to pick our AF035. Again, that's this one. Some of you uh, people who have been in the industry all may recognize that. That's the old AFCON K-clamp, been rebranded, great product, even good for plastic. And I'm going to say finish. Now, I took a lot of time to explain it, but that's how you do a particular brace calculation. This is all on the cloud on our web uh, website. Once you have put that in, we have you check a box. And once you check a box, we let you create a report, report and submittals, report submittals in CAD. For this exercise, I'm going to pick report and submittals. And this goes out and talks to the internet for a little while. I describe this as the uh, swirling vortex of patience here while I wait for the, the file to load. If you have faster internet, yours will go faster. Uh, but here's our temp file. And this, this temp file may appear in different places depending upon the browser you use. But this is what we give you as a report. Now, this is what you would probably want to download and save onto your server, your folder, your project. Um, and it, it is, we give you a little cover page. Here is that information where I didn't bother to type all that stuff in, but if you type in all the other, other information, it will appear here. If you don't want to type it in, it just shows up as blank. We give you a summary of the braces 
that we have uh, the brace we did. I only did one of them. We provide kind of the typical page that most people like to uh, extract out and put on their plans. I'm very proud of this one. Here's our bra it's brace A. So all the braces labeled A would match this calculation and be sized by comparison to it. Here is the parts and their loads. Here is our structural information. Here's our brace. Here is a nice little picture that we stitched together and have for you. Here is the zone of influence calculation with our declared seismic coefficient C sub P, our main, our branch lines, our, my other branch line. Here we explain and show the allowable stress on the forge main and how we don't exceed it compared to our uh, horizontal force, our seismic force. And here are our rise interval uh, stress calculations right there on that page. So that's kind of an all-in-one, and I say it loosely follows the NFPA suggested format, not required, but suggested, and that's how we provide it. In addition to that, we give you an annex of um, alternate materials. If we have other products in our in our product line that will do the job, we provide a list of those here. We give you a nice big picture of it, detailed picture. So I went to a steel joist adapter. There was my vertical flange here on perpendicular load to it, just like we described. Here is an explanation of how I calculated my C sub P using that calculation method per ASCE 7. And here are all the values that were applied to the formula so that, and here the, the more of the variables are here. Here is the actual formula. Here's the definition of them, where they came from. And any user or AHJ can go ahead and use these values and plug and chug in this formula, and they can calculate that same 0.374. So hopefully this is pretty transparent to the users. The next page is actually more information about the site classification and how we determined it. And this is all, again, driven by ASCE 7, just kind of explanatory material. Here's that bill of materials I mentioned where you help you with your stock listing. And then after that, because I asked for uh, report and submittals, all of the current cut sheets with all the data that we use to support our calculations are removed, are, are downloaded or extracted from our ASC's website and incorporated here for you to keep in posterity. The nice thing about this, if in the future, if we ever go ahead and change our data sheet for whatever reason, you will have the information that was available at the time that you did this calculation. So that's the 18 pages we give you for a particular report. So they that's, um, that's how you would do a spray brace calculation. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have questions or problems, please feel free to reach out to me. My information is here on the screen. My name is John Deutsch and uh, have a great day. Cheers.